I am back and this is part four of this uh, series of videos and um, we're going to go to uh, Habakkuk chapter two now because uh, this gives a little bit of a, an example of what's going to happen. Our father gives us types and examples to live by. Things were literal in a prophecy back then and it gives an, as an example of what's going to happen today. Um, and then there's some prophecies that haven't came to pass yet, but the ones that have are an example to us. Uh, so Habakkuk chapter 2. And uh, Habakkuk is uh, asking the Lord why judgment never goes forth. Um, that's what he was asking in chapter 1. And... Uh, we're, this is chapter 2 in uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1 and it reads I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved in other words he's 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 watching he's he's a watchman and he, he's doing as he is, was told to do he's watching and waiting verse 2 and the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. In other words, whoever reads this, tell about this prophecy. Verse 3. <clears throat> for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, this is talking about the end times right there, it shall speak and not lie. Though it will tarry, Wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. I mean, uh, everybody's expecting something to happen right now. I mean, everybody can feel it in their souls. Uh, and it seems like it's tearing. It's not going to happen. It's like on the on the verge of it, but it's just not coming forth yet. Well, it's gonna. It's gonna. It's promised. Verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up. Now, this is talking about the Antichrist. And also, it has a twofold meaning because it's also talking about our, our uh, leadership that we got going on. Um, it has several meanings. Uh, our Father's Word is living and alive, and it has several different meanings. Um, but the Antichrist, a lot of people think, is going to be some man that's going to rise up out of the earth. Uh, well, if you have read our Father's Word with understanding... That is not the case. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye might be not soon shaken in mind, neither be troubled by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, it's coming. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. In other words, the apostasy has to happen. The falling away, the forsaken of the faith. Either you were duped out of it or uh, you freely gave it up. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now what does son of perdition mean? I want you to go into the Greek because I'm not going to look everything up for you. I want you to look this up for yourself. Because you shouldn't trust what I say or any man. Uh, if you do not have a strong concordance, I suggest you get one. And if you, uh, there's free ones online, but I per, prefer uh, the actual original James Strong's concordance. Um, that's the only one I actually trust. Uh, but if you go look up the Son of Perdition, it will lead you to, it is Apollo me. And it means to die tomorrow, uh, um, die, loose, mar, perish. Um, in other words, who is the only creation or the only child of God that has been judged to death thus far? And you can find that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. It is Satan. It's none other than Satan himself. And uh, that, that is the only one who the Antichrist can be. And if you follow the uh, original... Uh, I mean the English words and break them back to their Greek values you will find out that it's talking about Satan 
the angel from the bottomless pit, uh, I believe that's Revelation chapter 9. Um, it's none other than him. He's going to come. He's going to act like he's just like the returned Messiah. He's going to act like he's Jesus Christ back on this earth to rapture the church. And he's going to be performing miracles and he's going to be deceiving many as it is written. But I urge you to look into that rapture doctrine and make sure that it is in our Father's word. Because a lot of things that people say are in our Father's word that are not. So I suggest you start studying up and uh, asking our Father what he thinks about these things. Verse 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, it is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. In other words, they shall live by his faith. That's a twofold meaning. That means that we should live by faith and not by sight, and that we will live spiritually by our faith. Verse 5. Yeah, also, because he transgresseth, transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Satan is very prideful. Neither keepeth at home who hath enlargeth his desire as hell, and as is as death. There are two other names of Satan right there, and cannot be satisfied. Why? Because he wants to be God, and he never will be, and he knows it. But gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. What is it? What is written? It is written that every man, every woman, every child that does not have the seal of, their, seal of God in their forehead, in other words, the truth implanted into their minds, shall worship and wander after the beast. And if you're... I'm not going to go and just totally demonize the rapture doctrine because uh, while it is a false doctrine, those, some, those people who believe in such a doctrine are my brothers and my sisters and they're just deceived and they do not know no better. And they just need a step in the right direction. Verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. In other words, how long... How long do you think people are gonna just, gonna just stand around while you're taking everything from them? How long do you think that's gonna happen? I'm betting not too much longer. Uh, verse seven: Shall they not rise up suddenly, that shall bite thee, and shall awake and vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties for them, unto them? In other words, uh, there's a deadly wound coming to your little new world order. It's written in our Father's word. It will come. <laughs> and it's going to seem like this new world order is not going to come because of this deadly wound, which is going to come from the elect, the saints, uh, the, the true children of God who know the word of God and keep the and have the testimony of Jesus Christ and keep the commandments of God. See, see, we're already speaking out against it. And there is something coming. I don't know what it is, but... This establishment is going to receive a very deadly wound. Verse 8. I don't know what it is. I know it's in our Father's word. I'm not a psychic. I have no clue. Verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood. And for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. In other words, you think nations are going to just sit there and continue to allow allow uh, unjust wars to be raged in their countries and all these innocent men, women, and child dying for material things. Father, have mercy on our souls. That's all I ask. Verse 9. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. An evil covetousness to his house. That he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. And the only one who can deliver anyone from the power of evil is Christ. We have no power. You know that? We have no power. Man thinks that he has so much power over things. When in all actuality, God allows the power. And it's through God's power, not our own. And it's so funny that people even think they have any power at all. When they have none. These flesh bodies are going to die. We have souls. They go back to the Father which gave it. Ecclesiastes says so. 
verse 9. Oh, yeah, I already did it. Did I do that? Right, I'll just start it over. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covenant to, to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Yeah, we went over that. Verse 10. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people, and hast sinned against thy soul. In other words, you're preaching a false doctrine, saying that we evolved from apes, and that God loves, loves uh, homosexuals. You know what? He may love the person, but he doesn't love the act of homosexuality. It is an abomination unto him. I didn't say it. He said it. Verse 11. And it's disgusting anyways. Why would some man want to stick their penis into another man's butthole anyways? I mean, excuse the vulgar language, but that's freaking filthy. Verse 11. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. In other words... It's obviously stolen property, uh, ill-gotten gains. Verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establish a city by iniquity. Verse 13. Is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity, emptiness? That's what vanity means, emptiness. Verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge and the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea, verse 15, and it is. We have the internet right at our fingertips. And we can, we can, we can study the word of God anytime we want. And uh, while the end time famine is not for bread, it is for hearing and understanding of the word of the Lord, Amos chapter 8. Um, those who diligently seek and study in our Father's word will receive. He said, study yourself to show Study to show yourself approved unto God. Verse 15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunk also that thou mayest look on his nakedness, or their nakedness. In other words, uh, deceit, lies, uh, get him, it, it's very plainly written. Verse 16. Thou art filled with shame for the glory, for glory, Okay, thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. That don't even sound good. Verse 17. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of the beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, and of the city, and of the all that dwell therein, in other words, if, if somebody's not stopped peeking out about this, the blood is on your hands. We're supposed to watch. Pray. Be ready. Not let uh, people be murdered and, uh, I mean, innocent people be murdered. Yeah, I said murdered. And uh, people get it all confused when it says thou shall not kill because that's an error in translation. It's thou shall do no murder. In other words, lie in wait for somebody else's blood. If you're going to defend yourself in self-defense, there is nothing wrong with that. And you know what? When Christ was saying, turn thy cheek, he was saying when you are ministering the word of God, if you have somebody slap you in the face, you turn the other cheek also because you're handling the word of God and we're supposed to handle it with care. Verse 18. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that maker that the maker of his work trusted thereon to make dumb idols. Another false worship of, of false gods such as the Antichrist Satan or uh, whatever it is, your car, your house. It doesn't matter. If you put something before God, it is idol worship. Verse 19. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, awake, to the dumb stone, arise. It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath in it at all in the midst of it. In other words, it's not alive. It can't save you. None of your empty materialistic crap can save you. Verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And all will keep silence in the day of the Lord. Because every knee, it is written that every knee shall bow in the first day of the Lord. In the day of the Lord. 
And it says in 2 Peter chapter 3 that uh, we are not to be ignorant of this one thing, that a day with the Lord is a thousand years. And, and uh, I mean, yeah, one day with, with the Lord, I'm paraphrasing, of the Lord is a, as a thousand years, uh, and a thousand years is one day. In other words, the day of the Lord is a thousand year period where the elect who were chosen called before the foundations of this world, which in other words mean just the first earth age, they stood with God, and they're chosen in this earth age to do a purpose for him, are going to teach in the millennial reign of Christ. Uh, but that's all I have time for this particular study. Uh, I love you all, and God bless. And uh, I hope I didn't confuse anybody, upset. Um, you know, we need to love, love each other, like Christ said. We need to love each other and stop with the violence and all the hate. And uh, this race is better than that, the race, and, 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 and whatever. You know, they're just doing this just to divide us. Have you been seeing 222? 11, 11, 12, 12, 414, 444, 555. Anything like that? Any of you? 777, 717? These numbers are no coincidence. I know a lot of other people that are seeing them. But anyways, uh, I love you all and God bless me. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, bring peace of mind to you all. And may the glory go to our Father in heaven, in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.